Hey guys, it's April 13th, 2017 and welcome to another interactive retro PC build where you get to vote on what parts go into the machine. Before we begin and explain how everything works, I have a very cool announcement to make. Electromine, a German shop selling second-hand computer and electronics components, was kind enough to supply me the Pentium 3 and Athlon used in this video. Now, I've bought tons of products from them myself over the years, so I'm super excited about this opportunity because without your support, I could have never gotten to this point. We have a special discount code for you to use. Buy anything from the Electromine online store and you can use the Phil's Computer Lab voucher code for a 20% discount. I will put all the details and links down below in the description. With that out of the way, let's begin this project. The theme is building a 1 GHz retro gaming PC. At the top right hand corner, there should be a little icon that lets you cast a vote. You can choose today between the Intel Pentium 3 and the AMD Athlon. I will briefly talk about these processes and also the motherboards that we're going to use. So to vote, you need to click on the icon here at the top right hand corner on the screen. Over the next few days, I will ramp up my production schedule and the plan is to have a video every day with new parts to vote on. To pull this off, I will publish each video at 6 p.m. my local time. So you have 12 hours to vote and at 6 a.m. in the morning, I can see what parts got the most votes and off I go and work on the next video. Because YouTube can be a little bit flaky with the notifications, make sure you are subscribed and also click on that little bell icon to turn on the notifications. So let's have a closer look at the two processors. Both of them are clocked at 1 GHz, both have a front side bus of 133 and therefore the same multiplier. Also, both CPUs have the same amount of level 2 cache, 256 kilobytes. The Pentium 3 is for socket 370 and the AMD Athlon is for socket A. There are some slight differences in terms of power draw. The Pentium 3 is a little bit more efficient, drawing just under 30 watts. The AMD needs around 40 watts. Let's have a look at the motherboard that we're going to use if you vote for the Pentium 3. This one is from Gigabyte. It's the GA6VTXE and it's got the VIA chipset. It is compatible with the, all the Pentium 3s, the copper mines as well as the Tualatin. And it's got an ISO slot which is not that common anymore on these Pentium 3 motherboards. All the latest drivers are available still on the Gigabyte website. I've already flashed it to the latest BIOS. And the VIA chipset is actually fairly decent. I've done a video in the past where I compared this motherboard with an Intel chipset motherboard. And in DOS, the VIA was slower. However, in Windows, the uh, Gigabyte motherboard was actually faster. What else is going on? We've got SD RAM, PC133 is what we're going to use. And we've got ID interfaces, a floppy connector, no SATA port on this motherboard. And we've got five PCI slots and also an AGP interface. Now, if you guys choose to go with the Athlon, we're going for a quite modern motherboard. This is a socket A motherboard from Axpa, which is a company related to Gigabyte, apparently, uh, and it's the XPK7V600, also a VIA chipset with the KT600 chipset. This is one of my favorite chipsets for the Socket A, and at least in Australia, the Socket A motherboards are easier to find than decent Pentium 3 motherboards. And this is one of the most common ones with the KT600 chipset and they're also very stable and you can use any of the CPUs from the Duron to the uh, early Athlons to the late Athlon XP. So one motherboard for all the CPUs, which is fantastic. Now this motherboard I bought brand new last year. The eBay seller is still selling them new in the box. And what I like is that you get the driver disks, the user manual and that new hardware feeling. I couldn't find a BIOS update, but the BIOS it comes with worked really well and I haven't had a Athlon CPU that did not work with this motherboard. The Socket A motherboard uses DDR memory, so that gives it a bit of an edge compared to the Pentium 3. We've got ID interfaces as well as SATA ports, so that might come in handy depending on what storage solution we're going to use. 
There is no ISO slot on this motherboard. We've got five PCI and an AGP interface. And this is the case we're going to use in this project. I think I bought this two months ago. It was one of the cheapest cases I could find, the Deep Cool D Shield. But it's got a window, so I will do my best to make this machine also look a little bit nice. Remember to cast your vote at the top right hand side of the screen. Anything in the comments, it doesn't count towards the vote, unfortunately. And a big thank you to ElectroMind for giving me this opportunity and supplying these processes. Check the web link down below. Remember, there's a 20% discount voucher coupon for any of the items on the store. And that's it, guys, for this video. I'm really eager to see which one you're going for. Also, leave some comments down below about the choice between Panium 3 and Athlon. And I'll see you tomorrow with the next video.